This is part one of a four part series on object oriented languages. In this video, we look at classes, objects, methods and attributes. So object oriented programming attempts to capture or group information, data and related functionality into structured items known as objects. With OOP, the world is viewed as a collection of objects. Now, an object could be anything, such as an animal, a car, a person or a house. Or it could be something much more abstract, for example, a customer's account or a data structure, such as a stack or a queue. Each object is responsible for its own data and the operations performed on that data. Objects interact with each other by sending and receiving messages. So let's take this light bulb. What characteristics does it have? You could say one of its characteristics is its wattage, let's say 40 watts. Its color, so white. Its type, so we've got a filament bulb. Its connection type, so in this case, a screw fixing. Once we've identified the information and actions relating to an object, we can place them into what's called their own class. Now, all classes have three main sections. We have the name of the class. We have its attributes, so for example, all the information shared by any object of this class type. And you can loosely think of these as the item's variables and also its methods. So that's any code associated with the class that allows you to access or change its attributes. And you could think of these roughly as subroutines. So what we're showing you here is what is known as a class diagram. You can think of a class as a blueprint used to set out or define what the attributes and methods an object of a certain type should have. Now be careful, a class is not actually an object itself. It is just the template we use so that every object we make from that class looks the same. This is one of the advantages of OOP. Once you define a class, i.e. decide what attributes and methods it will have, it becomes very easy to reuse that class and create hundreds of objects of that class. So here's another example, this time a toy tank. Remember, this class doesn't yet represent a real instance of a toy tank. It just tells us what all our toy tanks need to look like. We can see that every tank needs a color and a name. To create a copy or an instance of the class, we can use a single line of code using the keyword new. This is called instantiation the process of creating an object from the class template. So here we've instantiated or created three objects of the class toy tank. These are now three separate objects that exist as part of our program in memory. Each object has its own copy of the attribute and methods from the class template. So let's take this out of the abstract a little bit and actually let's look at some code. Now, object oriented syntax will vary from language to language. The version we present here is the one that you're going to see in the exams. So the class starts with the keyword class followed by the name, in this case, toy tank. And to end the class definition, we use the keyword end class. We then see the attributes for the class are listed. Now the keyword private is important, but we'll explain that in a later video. We can see the four methods for the toy tank class. There are two for getting the tank's color and name and two for setting the tank's color and name. 
Now you may have spotted there's also a fifth method at the top. Now this special method has the addition of the keyword new in its header after the word procedure. This is known as the constructor method. Every class will have a constructor method and this is a special method within the class that runs when an object of that class type is first created or instantiated. So when the object is instantiated, the constructor method fires off and takes the values of the parameters passed in to the toy tank object and sets its local attributes, color and name to their initial starting values. Remember, all the code shown here defines the toy tank class or the template for a generic toy tank. These three lines of code are the ones that actually instantiate or create three separate toy tank objects. So we've created three separate instances of the toy tank class, each with its own set of private attributes. We have tank one, a blue tank called Trevor, tank two, a red tank called Tim, and tank three, a green tank called Tony. Now these three separate objects exist in memory. We can very easily use the dot syntax to call the different methods on the various objects. So what do you think each of these lines of code will do? Let's just look at the first one a second. You've got tank1.getName. Remember tank1 is referring to an actual object that's in existence. So it will go to the tank1 object and run its get name method. Pause the video and see if you can work out the answers. There you go, the answers are on the screen now. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the difference between an object and a class?